So on this one right here, if we want to find out possible solutions to this or possible zeros, we're going to take this negative three. See, that's the constant term. And then the coefficient of the leading variable term right there. And we're going to look at the factors of each one of those, okay? Now, negative three, it's going to have plus or minus one and plus or minus three. You're always going to throw in both signs, okay? So that gives us four terms that are factors of that constant there. And then the leading term is four, so it's going to have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus four because you can have um, one times four, negative one times four, and so forth. And then you can have two times two, or negative two times negative two. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six possible factors of those two, the leading term and the, uh, Co the coefficient of the constant term. Now, what we're going to do to find the possible zeros or solutions is we're going to look at each one of these separately. In other words, we're looking at one over one. And again, throw in the plus or minus. We're going to do the plus or minus three over one there. And then we'll move on to this. So what we did is we did this one this one and then now we're going sort of like how you do with multiplication you know when you're multiplying one polynomial times the other you got to multiply each one and one times each one the other so um, one over two is the one half but again we throw in the plus or minus we'll do over four again the plus or minus and then we're going on to the next one three over two plus or minus and then three over four plus or minus. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, doubled because of the, the negative ones. So that's 12 possible zeros. Okay. So we want to find all zeros of this one right here, for example. Um, they're not going to go, they're just, this one was just to show you how to find them. The given you one is a little bit easier to do here first because it, this can be a little bit drawn out process for one that's got um, something like an x to the fifth. The one I'm going to show you a bit later is like an x to the fourth, but let's start out with this. All right, so we got the negative two. All right. And then we got just the one. Okay, so. So the factors of two are one, negative one, two, negative two. And then the factors of one over here, remember the coefficient of that X term there, X cubed is just one. So we got plus or minus one there. So there's really only four of them there now. So now we're just gonna use the synthetic division to do one, negative one, two, negative two, if need be. We may not need to do all of them. All right, so they start out uh, with negative two, okay? So you remember the, uh, the way that the synthetic division works? You put the coefficients, one, one, negative five, two, one, one, negative five, two, negative two. And then the negative two, the first one we're looking at is gonna go in that little block. We bring down, on that one and then start multiplying. Negative two times one is negative two. Add them up, negative one. Negative two times negative one is two positive. Add them up, negative three. Negative two times negative three is positive six. Add up negative two and six to get positive four. Now, um, as I had said is, this method is pretty quick to do this. So because sometimes you're gonna to have to do it a number of times before you find anything. Now this right here is not zero, so this is not a solution. But if you remember from last class, 
we did learn that that uh, if we were to stick negative two into this function, that would be the functional value. But we don't need it. I'm just pointing that out. I'm just reminding. Now let's just do the negative one. So again, one, one, negative five, negative two, bring down one, negative one times one is negative one, add them up at zero, negative one times zero is zero, negative five, negative five, negative one times negative five is five. Again, uh, you're gonna come with three. So this is not a solution, not a zero. So they're doing this specifically in an order just to show you that it is possible you might not get it until the very last one. But in any event, now they're doing one and two. They're doing the positive one. So bring down the one. One times one is one. Add them up, it's two. One times two is two. Add them up, negative three. One times negative three is negative three. Add them up, negative five. Not a solution. But on the last one, which is the worst case scenario, one over one, when one comes down and then multiply, two times, I'm sorry, two plus one, one is three, two times three is six, add up to one, two times one is two, negative two and two is zero. So we found that this thing has a solution. In other words, the original one has a solution at X equal to negative, I'm sorry, X is equal to two. All right, now we can also use this right here, the one, the three and the one, because that is gonna be another function that we can then use right here. The one, the three, the one and the zero, because there was no remainder, that means we can write this as now you remember, if, if x is equal to two, that means you're subtracting one, I'm sorry, subtracting two. So it's gonna be x minus two times, and then open up your parentheses. And you're just gonna put these coefficients here because remember, this is now represents an x squared, one x squared. And then this one represents the three x. And then this one represents one. Now, this right here should be easier to solve we could use the synthetic division again here on this one, but well, look at what we can do. We can just throw it in the quadratic formula. And you know why? Uh, what would have happened essentially though, if we had used the synthetic division, we're gonna run into, because you can see this, it's got a, an irrational solution. This one, would have, these would have been hard to find with the division. All right, so now putting this in, remember X is equal, I'm sorry, A is one, B is three, C is one. Put it in the quadratic formula. That's usually the best one to do it with because it may not be factorable and this one was not factorable. So the quadratic formula is your friend. Uh, if you cut on the complete and the square, we did a little bit about that at the beginning. You can use that, but usually the quadratic formula is the easiest one negative three plus or minus square root open up. There's B squared, three squared, minus four times one times one all over two times one. And then we've got uh, once you simplify it down and it's negative three plus or minus the square root of five over two. So these are irrational solutions. In other words, they're gonna um, have a square root in them that cannot be simplified. You can approximate them if need be, but um, you know they're not whole numbers. So that's why they're called irrational solutions because you can't express them as a fraction, all right? Now this is fractional, but in other words, there's no normal fraction like, you know, five eighths or three fourths or anything like that that represents it. It's gonna have a square root in it no matter what you do. Okay, any questions so far?
Okay, this doesn't ever affect you or anything, but I do it just because it's a good part. I want you to turn the ten minutes in and ten minutes in the So that way, you know, if I'm not there, like in between the semester and students got a question, they don't have the necessary information to talk to them without come and get me from the top of Mount Everest or something, wherever I'm at. During the break, you know. Okay, so. So there's the three solutions. And uh, if we, if I had mentioned it before, go back to this original one. What this means is the highest power right there, three, X to the three, you're going to have at most that many solutions you have um you could have a repeated solution like if um you know some remember well i can't remember if we talked about it or not because i was looking at the 130 class but sometimes the uh, uh parabola or whatever will go uh and just touch a point and then it'll come back and touch it again at that same point well Sometimes you have the same solution when you factor the, the polynomial that's twice, okay? Like in other words, if you had a, a perfect square trinomial set equal to zero, um, it would be both the solutions would be the same. So you just gotta realize that at most you may have one. So if you come up with two that are the same, that counts as two. All right, now, let's go on to the next thing here. Uh, now, let's just look at one more, and then I'm going to go through a fresh one for, with you. All right, so they want us to solve this. Uh, this is one thing um, that's kind of important to know. It's kind of, I'll give you a free solution. If you find one, that's what we call, um, an, I mean, it's a complex one that contains an imaginary um, solution. That's in other words, that I represents um, imaginary part of a complex number. You can have a complex number like real numbers, all real numbers are complex numbers, but uh, they, they may not have that imaginary part. And you can also have just imaginary solutions that have no real part. But what this is, is basically saying is, and this is why it's important, is just that if you come up with a complex solution that has an imaginary part, then its conjugate is also going to be one of the solutions. In other words, if you come up with a plus bi or a plus i, then a minus i will also be a solution. So you get two for the one kind of thing. So anyway, let's go on this one and then I'll uh, go to the board and, and do a fresh one by hand. All right, so here's one here, um, x to the fourth, the highest power, so the four we're going to use, and then the 13 is the other number we're going to use, and we're going to put the factors of 13 in the numerator, and the factors of 13 are just 1 and 13, both plus or minus, so there's four of them up there. And then the good thing is down here, there's just the 1 for that coefficient, it goes down there, so plus or minus 1. So we got one over one, negative one over one. We got 13 over one and negative 13 over one. So now let's just start testing them. 
again, this is a pretty simple procedure compared to that long division stuff. In one way, I kind of think that that's why they go over it, is just to show you, you should be thankful you got the synthetic division. All right, so uh, negative one. So remember, here's the coefficients of the of the. It was a power. Uh, yeah, cubic, cubic. So bring down the one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative six, negative one is negative seven. Negative one times negative seven is seven. And then twenty-two and seven is twenty-nine. Negative one and twenty-nine is negative twenty-nine. Add that up, negative 59. And then when you multiply here and get your 59, it's obviously it's not zero. So that's not one of them. But on the next one, we've got um, one, bring that down. One times one is one. And we got negative five. And then negative five times one, negative five, brings us 17. One times 17 and uh, take away 30 is negative 13. One times negative 13 is negative 13. And look at that, that was always a, already a positive 13 up there. So those add out to zero. So X equal to one is one of the solutions. All right. There. And then so the other part of what's the rest of the polynomial factored polynomial is just this right here. That now is a cube. So one cube, negative five x squared, 17 x, and then the negative three is a constant. All right, now, what you gotta do now is start all over. Now, I would mention, and then the one that we'll, uh, let's see, is it the one that we look at? I can't remember it. Sometimes, just uh, if you remember you factor them by grouping, you can try to do, do factor by grouping here and solve that. As a matter of fact, I just remember what there was one that. Uh, that was able to do that, that I did in the other class. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. Well, yeah, I can't do anything with factoring by grouping on that one. Anyway, so that evidently they think they gave it to us for that reason, just to make us go through this process. So it's actually still the same possible factors because we could have one repeat, as I said is, but we already know about X is equal to one. So let's just start doing it again. All right, so they do one and what about that? They get a hit right off. So X is equal to one is a repeated root. In other words, um, it's the same as the other ones, but it's still gonna be in factored form like this. And then we do this one here, x squared minus four, uh, 4x plus 13. We can just use again, the quadratic formula on that one. And look at this. All right. Um, at the end of the nine seven, um, I think it's the um, last section that we go over is the uh, quadratic formula. And by then you also learned about complex roots. So that's what we're going to get here because this one wouldn't have been factorable, and it also it's not a, it's not rational, but it's complex solution because once we put the things in here, the negative four and the one and thirteen, you end up with a negative inside thirty six. Okay, so remember if you remember the negative sign comes out as an i, and then you take the square root of thirty six. So that's how they get the plus or minus six to i. So just notice this, see, um, that here are two solutions. It's two plus 
3i and 2 minus 3i. So they occur in pairs like that. And that can be helpful. See, this is what I was telling you, what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra, that the degree of the, of the, of the function, polynomial function, or the highest power, um, then that's how many solutions you can expect. You, at most, you may have one that repeats. You see, when they wrote this here, I mean, there was really no sense in writing one uh, both times, but they did. But just to show you, that's one, two, three, and four. All right, let's see. Let me look at something real quick. All right. So how's it going out there? Y'all still awake? Yep. Okay. I'm here barely. Oh, wait. All right. So we're just going to finish up the last thing here. All right. So I was going to go look at the book in a minute. Because I meant, I just meant the example six and seven. I should have probably been paying attention to beforehand, but I want to look at that textbook and see which one six or seven, six and seven are. This class is very similar to Math One Thirty. Um, it's it's just that this yours has a few more applications in it that are practical and uh, uh, but they also don't go over the, some of the more theoretical stuff which is always good in my head okay Yeah, so this is what they don't want us to mess up the textbook. And that's kind of useless in my mind. All right, so let's look I'm on the board here. Find a spot for I'll come back and put in the powers in a minute. Just got to do that by hand.
That's not right. This is four. Okay, so there we go. All right, so uh, we're going to go through those same kind of little steps like that. This will be a little bit longer probably than some of the ones that we saw. Okay, so P is uh, 15. So this is P. And then this is Q. So um, for, for P, it's uh, plus or minus one. Plus or minus one is going to be a factor in all of them, possible factor in all of them. Three is also a factor, so we're doing plus or minus three. And then plus or minus five and plus or minus 15. And then Q. There's two, so it's one plus or minus, and then two plus or minus. So then we're going to put together the plus or minus Q. I'm sorry, the P over Q, which is going to be, uh, let's see, well, plus or minus one. So one, uh, one over one is plus or minus one. Three over one is plus or minus three. Always throw in both make positive and negative. And then five over one plus or minus five. All right, now let's do uh, plus or minus one over two, which is going to be one half. All right, and then three over two is plus or minus three halves. Um, hopefully, we don't have to do too many of these fractional ones, but sometimes this happens. And then five plus or minus. And then 15 plus or minus over two. All right, so uh, we're going to list all possible uh, zeros using the synthetic division. So let's just go in order. Okay, I'm, that's just all the zeros. Okay, we're not going to look for the solutions yet. I'm going to get a little bit better when to do that list. But that's all the possible zeros. This one is, uh, I believe it's a number four in the actual textbook. Now for this one, we're gonna do the same thing, but we wanna also Actually, you find all the solutions. So 
I wouldn't go into. So we want to do um, list the possible zeros. Is synthetic. And then use the quotient, which is that thing that's left over at the end. All right, so let's start out with the uh, listing. Okay, so remember, uh, P is two, and Q is also two. So um, basically, we're just going to have here, we're going to have one plus or minus and plus or minus two. Okay. And the same thing on this one. All right. So P over Q is going to pass is going to then process as plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and then because here it's one over one, two over one and then one over two. So it's plus or minus one half. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's not too bad. So let's go ahead and do let's do one first. So remember, we're using coefficients here. And remember, you still, if there's one missing, in other words, if there weren't an X squared term, you need to put a zero there. All right, so uh, bring down the two, one times two is Two, six and two is eight. One and eight is and one times eight is eight. This right here is thirteen, and then that's going to go to fifteen. So, not this one. Let's see if we can squeeze another one in here. So negative one times two is negative two, add them up, it's four. Negative one times four negative one times one is negative one. So that's gonna be one. Again, this is not one of them. All right, let's see if we can put one more right here. Let's put two.
So bring down the two. Two times two is four. Put it right here. Add up six and four is 10. Two times 10 is 20. That's going to give us 25. And that's 50, 52. So this one's not yet. All right. All right, let's go over to the uh, next slide here. And I mean, a new board. And we're going to try negative two. That's the fourth one. After this one, we got to possibly deal with fractions, but sometimes we can't help that. We need to find at least one. And if we find one, then we can use that to help us with the other one. So bring down the two. Two times negative two is negative four. Negative four and six is two. Negative two times two is negative four. Negative two times one is negative two. And what do you know it? So X equal negative two is a solution. Now just remember that means that that's a factor of X plus two. Okay. Because if we take this and put it over there and put the, that that would be X plus two the factor. All right, now, the other part is this right here. Okay, and then we're going to solve this one right here. In other words, this means A is equal to 2. B is equal to 2. And C is equal to 1. And I'm going to just throw it in a quadratic formula real quick. So negative 2, negative B, plus or minus. And it's two square, b square, minus four times two times one. All right, so that's um, negative two plus or minus, and I'm going to just do all this inside. Uh, that's um, 2 squared is 4, minus 8. So it ends up having a uh, negative 4 in there. All right, so then this is going to be negative two plus or minus, and then the square root of four is two i. And then all of these are divisible by two, so we can just divide, um, take out that common two top to bottom. Another way to look at it is uh, two over four is one half, and so that would also be one half. But if you just think about factoring a two out in each one, it makes it a little bit easier to think about. So then the two the solutions are negative two
negative one minus I over two, negative one plus I over two. So there's your three solutions. And remember it was originally a cubic, so that's what we were expecting to have it, uh, three solutions. Okay. So that's what they wanted to do. This was uh, this was essentially part C here. All right. Any questions about that process? I believe I'm going to go through one more um, for you. Let's see. So we should have enough time. All right, uh, hold on a second. Let me bring it back here. Let me go over to the textbook here a second. So this was 
Oh, I I'm sorry. I'm writing down the wrong down the word. All right, and uh, using the synthetic division is the first thing we start out because it's the easiest. Uh, like I said, it's one of the things you can try, but it may not always work. Is factor by grouping, and I, we may have done one and uh, uh, like that, and then this class I just it was in the last section. But anyway, I was just looking for it because it was a neat one. Because um, you would have thought that you couldn't. Uh, that you would have had to go another round on static division, but if you use your factor by grouping, um, you could essentially jump to the quadratic and then use the quadratic formula. All right, so uh, so p over q is one over two plus or minus. So that means then um, the possible solutions are, let's say, was it, uh, I don't know which number, is it one? Yeah, P is equal to minus one. P is plus or minus one. So we got one plus or minus, and then we got plus or minus. One and a half. All right. Because the P separately. Is, you know, one over um, one over one half and a half. So that's what's giving us that. All right, so let's just do them in order. Like I said, it's a fast method, so that's why um, I'm doing that. I can figure it out another way. But that's really not the scope of the class. Anyway, let's, let's move on. So we now have two, two times one is two, three. That can be blue, but this one's not. So that's not one. Move that right here. Okay. I just want to make sure I have it written down right because. Usually the best method is to kind of like take a picture of it and import it on this board, but I got it right. All right, so then we got negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. So that's going to give us negative one. This one either. All right, so let's try with fraction ones. All right, so all the subject division always starts the same way. The only thing time that's going to change is right now. What did you gotta do? Right. Possible. Awesome. 
So this is going to be 1. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. Look at that. So x is equal to 1 half is a solution. Now this just showing you that the fractions may not always be that bad. Let's just say we had done this one first. first. All right. What would happen? So this is negative one, negative one half times two is negative one. That's going to be zero. Zero times one and a half is three. Negative. So this is going to give us now a positive three halves. But that's going to be three halves and two halves is five halves. So this one wouldn't have been it. But you can see even with that one that the um, that the synthetic division wasn't too bad. All right. So now this um, quotient right here gives us two x squared. plus 2x and then this is x now just to show you in case you kind of forgot to you know when you got x equal to one half to get back to as a factor you gotta multiply both sides by two when you multiply this by two you're gonna have 2x is equal to 1, and then that's 2x minus 1 is one of the factors. Is it written as a factor? All right, so what we got to do is we got to take the second one, the 2x squared plus 2x minus 2, and either factor it or use the quadratic formula. Let's just throw it in the quadratic formula. And I'm going to do it over here because I ran out of room on that other side. I didn't have any more pages. There's a limit on 20. Good boy. All right. So um, So A is equal to 2, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to negative 1. And this is going to be another one that's going to have, uh, we couldn't factor it. It's not factorable. But you could factor it if it is, and it might be quicker. And you know what? This is exactly one like uh, very similar to one we had before. Now that um, that first solution was different, but um, this was one of the same ones. So it's negative four. So this is going to be negative two plus or minus two i over four. Now, what we could have done on this one if we either wanted to, I don't know that it would make it any different. You could have taken out a comma or divided everything by two 
and then just use the coefficient one, one, and negative one. And then you wouldn't have to do this here, but remember the same thing happened that it was negative one plus or minus i over two. All right, exact same one as that other one we looked at. All right, so the solutions are one half and negative one minus i over two. And then one plus i. So there's our three solutions. All right, so uh, uh, any questions? We've got a few minutes left for questions. Oh, uh, I see in your question, Daniel, about the um, Zoom button. Well, I don't know if I told you before that they were fixing this thing somehow beginning, I think it was the beginning of last week. I remember or it could have been a week before I came in to my in a morning online, you know, virtual class and the Zoom button wasn't there. And I said, oh, no, it had some kind of an error. And then I said, well, I know how to get into it. I can just go through, through the back way and evidently y'all could still see it from canvas is what I understand. And then they, they told us that that was down and they, um, that, that that's what we should do it. And it's going on for two weeks. I don't know, maybe three weeks. And they even built a little, um, a link for us for us to have a front end where you could click on it to get into that back end and get into your classes. And then they fixed it. So, but when they fixed it, the zoom, was taken out of the navigation menu. So I had to go back and put it in and I didn't think about doing it until right there at the beginning. I mean, right before class. All right, so uh, if you don't have any questions, I'll see you uh, Tuesday. We'll finish up another section Tuesday and we'll talk about that next test. Like I said, we'll be testing before the end of the month. Okay.
All right, so y'all okay? Any last questions? But they did go away. Uh, they, they, 